All right. Yes, ma'am. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another opportune time just to be in your presence. I thank you for the teacher that you um, bestowed over us on this class. I thank you for everyone that's going to sound that sound of my voice. And we just thank you for the amazing and blessed day that we're having so far. Let your spirit reign. Let your holy, heavenly host just reign down on this class and let us retain everything we need to. Let it be restoration and a renewal in our spirits and let us enjoy it so we can be able to minister in our everyday walk, in our everyday walk. In your name, we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, that's most important. We want to be able to to administer, administer the word of God in our in our everyday walk. What do they say? I was thinking, what do they say? We spend about eight hours a day at work. So I actually, even though I'm here with my husband, but I actually have more talk time, really, when I think about it with my coworkers. Um, so just something to think about. Apologetics, was this a new, were you guys all familiar with this science, with this discipline? Um, was it new for you? Any thoughts before we get going? No, no. I know Sister Dana has an awesome new clip on her thing. Facebook. So I know she was familiar with it somewhat. Yes, ma'am. I, I am familiar with it. And um, that's why I was so excited about you doing this right here, because I want to not only be familiar with it, but kind of like walk in it, you know? Right. Yes, I agree. Any Anybody else? Any I, takes? Um, I, got, I got, um, I never heard of it before, before this class. And um, I asked my grandmother about it. You know, she's a chancellor over at Grace and I asked yes. her what it was. And she tried to, not apologize, she tried to explain it. And she just started going into the sermon and I sat at her house about four hours and I only need to be there for 30 minutes. And she just kept going on. So she said it's, it's to make sure that I'm paying attention, get my notes. She's like, it's a really good course. So I'm excited. <laughs> good, good. Anybody else? I didn't know too much about it. <clears throat> and you know who my pastor is, Pastor Doreen, you know, she is a teacher's teacher. Yes, she is. Um, so yeah, when we kind of talked about it, she... um. Like King Yell said, she said, just pay attention because there's a lot of things you're going to learn. There's a lot of things you're going to hear. Some things will be familiar. Some things won't. And as I was reading, some things was familiar. Okay. Some mm -hmm. things, things wasn't. And I'm like, Sister Dana, I just don't want to hear it and see it. I want to be a doer of it because that's what God has called me to do. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. So I thought we... um. You know, we went back and forth on, on the book and uh, Sister Nina kind of chimed in. But um, there's so many, many uh, books out there with great information. Um, this is the one we settled on. And I think uh, R.C. Sproul does a great job of giving you a good, giving us a good introduction and a great overview of apologetics. Um, there is another gentleman, I'm sure he writes books. Um, you know, I always encourage you to go on the internet, Google um, reputable um, ministries. And you'll know, you all discern, you have the spirit of God abiding on the inside of you. So you'll know who's who's for you or, or who is really uh, speaking the word of truth and who isn't. So I always encourage you to also do your, you know, Dr. Spears always laughs at me with my little term, do your due diligence. Um, you know, see what other information is out there. And I say that because you may run across someone else and they may have a way of breaking down the terminology that makes more sense than what I may be saying. So that's why I always say, if you have the opportunity to listen to someone else, I encourage it, you know, as long as you know, they're not too far one way or the other way, kind of, you know, like I said, you feel you, you know, when you're, you're knowing that what they're saying is right and it's leading you. I don't know how far they could go out with apologetics, but you know, there's always, the truth always, you know, the enemy, um, or not even just the enemy, sometimes the truth always finds a way to get distorted. But like I said, I think we settled on R.C. Sproul. Um, I had heard about him, have, you know, um, read some of his other works. So I think this will be uh, a great addition to your library. That is also my prayer that anytime we pick books out for you all, it's not just about books that you can use while you're at Zoe, but books, you know, that will help you and guide you throughout, you know, throughout your life to increase your, your own personal libraries. Okay. So we're going to get a little bit into apologetics. 
I'm really looking at chapter one. I did go over both, uh, like uh, Evangelist Wear over a few, but we're just going to kind of get a good basis. I want to make sure that we all have a good understanding. Um, so with that being said, does anybody want to take a stab at what the term apologetics uh, means, what it en encompasses? I mean, I, I mean, it's like the book says, it's defending your faith. Defending your faith. That's the best way to put it. Mm. Defending your faith, standing on, you know, standing your ground, right? That's the way I way I look at it, or way we we talk about it. Um, like we said, you want to be able to expound on the word of God. Of course, you want to be intelligent. You, you know, you can't meet me in Kroger and hoop me, right? If I'm asking you a question, I don't expect for you to go off in tongues, right? I don't expect for you to shake and bake. I just I need you to answer my question. I need you to be effective and I need you to be efficient. And that's not making fun at anybody. Lawrence, can you know where we go to church and what we do? We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. But again, when you are away from that setting, you want, again, to be effective. You know, you don't want anybody to be like, man, she is weird out. Because you want them to receive the things of God. And one thing Chancellor always says when he's teaching sometimes is he is for certain and I agree with him. I'm for sure Jesus was not hooping on the mount, okay? I'm sure he was standing there delivering the word of God, teaching the people, and expecting them to be able to hear and obey and to process, right? So sometimes when all that's going on, I'm, I'm in my feelings, so to speak. I'm not processing it out, right? So again, I'm not making light because I, I embrace it. I embrace all, all that God has, you know? So... But when I meet somebody on the street, I'm I'm not quaking, all right? So apologetics, we learn it comes from the Greek word apologia. A-P-O-L-O-G-I-A. -O -O -A. Almost sounds like apology, right? Um, I'm sure apology is a derivative of that word. But when we think about it in the sense of uh, the discipline of apologetics, we are thinking, as Sister Nina and some of you guys said already, <clears throat> it means a reason statement, right? Or a verbal defense, right? So I am defending what I believe. I'm defending my stance on the faith. I'm not sorry about anything, right? I'm defending, I'm taking my stance. So when we think about apology, <clears throat> excuse me, when I, I do something wrong in my family, hey, mom, I'm sorry, dad, I'm sorry, you know, or I apologize for something that I did, I, I misspoke, I missaid, but in this case, I'm defending, as the title says, <clears throat> I'm defending the faith. I'm standing on the word. So if somebody could go to 1 Peter for me, let's go to 1 Peter 3. So again, I want to make sure apologetics, I'm defending. I'm arguing for a particular point or view. Okay. So I'm, I'm building my case. I can build my case based on the word of God. Anybody ever did jury duty? Right. Mm -hmm. I had to do, yeah. What a pleasant thing, <laughs> but I had to do jury duty, right? And the uh, prosecutor and the defense team, they were each building their case, trying to convince me and the other juries uh, who was right, who was wrong, you know, who should we go with, who should we not go with? And you know what I found? I'm getting off strange. Unlike TV, they did not let us go back and get notes. We, after it was the defense rest, that was it for us. We had to make a sound decision. So uh, with us, I guess that's leading, we don't rest. We have the word of God. So we always have the word of God uh, to back us, right? So we don't ever have to worry about, hey, it's over for me. Even if you miss it, you can always go back to another door. And I'm not, not saying miss it, or maybe that person just didn't comprehend. They just didn't understand what you were, you know, what you were saying. You can go back. We keep studying. We can keep growing. We keep getting what better and better every day. Right. We keep spending that time with God. We keep growing in the things of God. We keep, you know, building that relationship. We're intimate with him. Right. So the information is coming. The Holy Spirit is leading us. So we have another opportunity for uh, witnessing to present itself. So somebody is first Peter three for us. Let's start at verse 14. Anybody ready to read? I will. All right, let's go. I'm reading from the King James Version, and it says, <clears throat> excuse me, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 14, it says, and do not be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled, 
be sanctified the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope <clears throat> that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good uh, consensus, consensus that when they de defame you as evildoers, those who reveal your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm trying to read out my glasses. The words too little, so I'm having to go back. <laughs> home, so I'm sorry about that. <clears throat> you're fine. You're fine. All is well. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back and read another version. Y'all know me. I like usually like my Amplified, but also like the CSB, the Christian Standard Bible. I'm going to start at verse 14. Um, so we can kind of compare and contrast. Give us expound on on the words. Okay. Verse 14, but even if you should suffer for righteousness, right standing, right? You are blessed. Bless what we are empowered to prosper. Do not fear them or be intimidated. So Peter is giving us clear directions. Do not fear them. Who's them? Hey, let's think about uh, religions that we just studied. Buddhists, Muslims, right? Um, Hindus. Do not fear them, atheists, or be intimidated. But in your hearts, regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in where in you. And then he goes on in verse 16 and he tells us how to do it. Yet do this with what? Gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. You won't be put to shame. They will be put to shame. So I'm going to read that again because I want to make sure he tells us how to do it. I know sometimes when we we kind of you think about debates, right? You think about kind of heated arguments or intense sessions, right? But Peter admonishes us to do this with what gentleness and reverence, keeping a clear conscience. So that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in who in Christ, they will be put to shame. Glory to God. So the first thing I like that he tells us is have no fear. Glory to God. We will not fear, right? We are powerful. Amen. So we address, again, we address those questions with gentleness and respect. So when I was doing my, my research, my study, and there's a gentleman, a pastor, of Voodie Beecham. Um, and he was talking about how when he first came to Christ and the Jehovah Witnesses came to see him. And the first time they came, he kind of felt, you know, uh, he, to me, he felt like a little intimidated, felt like he was not prepared. So when he left, he went and he talked to his mentors and they're like, yeah, he was like, okay, they'll be back. So he was like, okay, when they come back, I'm going to be ready. So he said what he did was he went to the library and he researched Jehovah's Witness. He researched, researched. And when they came back, he was ready for them. And he was kind of like, you know, I'm feeling myself. I could tell them more about their religion or their sect than they know. And he was just kind of rev re reveling in the fact that he kind of uh, put them to shame and blew them out. And he said one of the things his mentor said as he listened to him when he first said, when he finally finished, he was like, um, do you think they'll be back? And he said, no, I don't think they'll be back. And he said, he just kind of walked away. And that made him th think about, ooh, what is the real reason for me to defend the faith, right? Is it for me to just put somebody to shame or is it to what? Draw me into who? To Christ. So I was like, wow, that is powerful because a lot of times we go into discussions and we go in and we don't always mean, you know, mean bad. Sometimes we're just kind of zealous about it, right? We're just defending, you know, they seem to be attacking Jesus. That can't be happening. And so we kind of go in and try to hit it hard. But again, we want to be gentle about it because the Holy Spirit is what he is gentle. He's peaceable, right? So if he's leading us and guiding us, he will instruct us how with gentleness, how to minister the word. And sometimes you ever, you know, there is, a, I can't think of it now in Psalms, where there's a, a scripture about how we, you know, we handle an argument. Oh, thank you, God. A soft word turns away what? Wrath, right? So softness is a powerful tool. People don't think about it, but it is a, a very powerful tool. Um, so we want to go on. 
and still I'm in chapter one, you guys. I'm trying to form an outline and I'm going to give y'all a hint. I'm, I'm kind of getting off track. I'm debating whether or not to send notes this time. Okay. I'm kind of debating. So if you don't get notes in a couple of days, that means I'm expecting you to write notes, write good notes and you'll be fine. I have confidence in you. Okay. So one thing we know is that apologetics is not something that we only deal with what in the modern day church, the early church, right? The Ecclesiastes. we're talking about Peter writing this, you know, giving us this instruction in the word of God. We know Paul defended the faith, right? So the early church had to what defend the faith because we know that um, for a while, early on, Christianity was viewed as a sect of Judaism, right? It wasn't seen as a separate entity. So we kind of, they kind of, the early church had that going on. So up to the destruction of Jerusalem, I believe in AD 70, um, Christianity was seen as an early um, sect of Judaism and not a separate entity. But after the destruction and the scattering of the Jews, which we know was the dias diaspora, um, then that's when there was a separation. Um, or there was always a separation, but um, the Romans began to see them as separate, okay? So at that time, uh, Judaism was already a legally sanctioned religion in Rome, in Rome, but Christianity was not. So the practice of the Christian faith was illegal. Judaism was legal. Christianity was not. So because it was illegal, it was also subject to what? To prosecution or persecution and prosecution. Therefore, Christian intellectuals had to answer charges or they had to do what we know now as what? Apologetics. They had to start defending the faith. So R.C. Sproul, he actually lists two, um, but I'm going to go to Just a Martyr, was an early church apologist. And I actually have a uh, a, um, a few pages that I'm going to email you all. I did not get an opportunity today at work, but I will make sure that I get those because um, I can go there and scan it in and, and we'll send it out. And you'll have a few sheets um, from Justin Martyr's apology. I want you to review it. It's an easy read. Even though it's hundreds of years old, it's an easy read. And also I want you to, to remember now, if I send you something, you, you may see it again. It may, there may be parts of it that you see in homework or um, in um, your midterm or your final. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about midterms and final later on in the, in the, in the um, class term. So just as martyrs apology lists four common accusations of the Christian church or the Christian community. So the first charge First common charge for the church was sedition, right? Which means they were looked at as traitors, kind of like what happened in January a couple of years back, right? When they stormed the Capitol, we see them as traitors, right? So um, emperor worship had emerged. So there was a phrase, they had to go around reciting the phrase, Kaiser Curious or Caesar is Lord, which showed loyalty. Well, we know as Christians, we're not declaring anybody Lord, but who Jesus. So Justin Martyr argued that Christians were, were good people. Hey, these are good people. They pay their taxes. They're law-abiding citizens. Um, but they are not able to confess Caesar as Lord again, because Jesus is Lord. He is who? He is the one and only living God who is worthy of worship. So that was the first act. OK, or one of their, their biggest offenses in the eyes of, of Roman uh, Rome or Roman citizenship. OK, so again, they were charged with sedition. The second one was atheism. Sounds kind of strange now that the church was accused of being atheist back in the day. <laughs> Seems real odd that they had that levied against them. Uh, but Christians were considered atheists. Right. So we know what the atheists deny the existence existence of gods or gods so why were they considered okay i understand why were they considered um atheists because they refused to worship the pantheon of roman gods so there is a story about an older bishop named polycarp um and he was charged with um declaring kaiser curious right or caesar is lord 
but he refused to do it. Um, and as a result, his life was on the line, right? So what they did was, I think they said Marcus Aurelius, forgive me, but they took him to an arena. And, you know, we all know about the Roman ar arenas and all this that they had going on, right? So, and they charged him to declare that, uh, you know, of course he was not an atheist and, and declare that he, you know, Caesar was Lord. But what he did was when he got the opportunity, he stood and he declared and he waved his finger that everybody in the arena were atheists, right? That he was not the atheist. They were all atheists. And as a result, he lost his life. But he still def what? defended the faith in spite of death, right? So um, Justin Martyr, again, argued that Christians were not atheists, but they were totally committed theists, one God, right? Confirming the reality of a supreme God. Any of these terms, I know some of them we are already familiar with, but theists, atheists, so theists confirms the reality of a single supreme God while denying the polytheism, right? And we learned before that polytheism means what? Many gods, belief in multiple gods, so the Romans believed in multiple gods and a pantheon, which you'll see that term is a group of gods from a specific polytheistic group. Okay, we okay? I know it's a lot of terms. Tell me to slow down, back up, raise your hand. All right. So that was the second. So the first again was sedition. They were traitors. Second, they were considered to be atheists. The third aspect of Justin Martyr's apology is they were charged with something called love feasts. Uh, rumors that swirled throughout that they had secret meetings in the catacombs, where the catacombs were, what the graves. There were rumors of incest and sexual perversion, which I thought odd because, you know, it was a lot going on in, in Greek and Roman Empire. You know, they were marrying their sisters and all kinds of stuff. So that was the third thing. They were charged with love feasts. And the fourth thing was, believe it or not, the sacrament was, was an issue because rumors were started. It's amazing. We all know how rumors get started, right? And they, they just go out of control. So it was levied against Christians that they were cannibals. They were eating flesh. They were drinking blood, all because whoever was spreading the rumors, they were overhearing, but they did not understand the sacrament of the Eucharist, right? So those are four things that I want you to keep in mind of, of the accusations that Justin Martyr's apology addressed. And the another thing, uh, Christians were also regarded as intellectually inferior um, because the doctrine of the Trinity seemed to contradict Greek philosophers. So I pray, pray that you guys go on. There is a class called the Ministry of Paul. And I love that class because you get to see you really get to see the life of Paul outside of, yes, within the confines of the word of God, but you really, it helped me really see Apostle Paul, the person of Paul. That's the best way to put it. So you get to, to read about him going and, and engaging in these debates with philosophers um, or schools of philosophy that we only, you know, we read about in school, but maybe you never put Paul in that setting, okay? Um, so... They believed in what their main philosophies were of Platonism or Plato um, or Stoicism. Stoicism believes that humans are rational. Platonism believed that humans, the soul is irrational. So these were the schools of thought at that particular time. So again, they thought that Christians uh, were inferior intellectually. Then we also, I don't know if you guys remember the burning of Rome in I believe 64 AD, where Nero, what, what is the saying? While Rome was burning, Nero, who was what leader at that time, was playing his fiddle. So to get some of the heat off of him, Nero kind of transferred the rumor to the Christians that Rome burned because of, of the Christians or the Christian community. Um, and we all, if y'all ever know anything about Nero, Nero was vicious. He killed his mom, I think a brother or something. You know, even tradition says that he would burn humans and put them in his garden as torches just to light the way. So a vicious, vile individual. So that was another rumor out there that the Christians had started the um, burning of, of Rome. Okay. So they had all this going on and hence we are to the discipline of what? Apologetics, again, defending the faith. Okay, so that's one side of it. 
So apologetics is not only about defense. I like that R.C. Sproul brings this out. It's also about offense. I don't know if you guys like sports. I, I do like sports. I don't play football, but I like it. So I have a nephew. Sometimes I'll hear my husband say, oh, R.J. played both ends of the field. Well, you know, in basketball, you are on what offense and defense. You're on uh, one court, you're on offense, back, you're on defense, not so much in, in football. So we are called to, uh, we have the opportunity to defend, to be on the defense with our faith. We also have the opportunity to be on the offense for our faith, right? So we have to be prepared to defend or work the court or play both ways, however you want to say it. And again, we have to do that with gentleness and respect, okay? So with apolog apologists, our task is what? Proof and persuasion. So again, as we said earlier, apologetics is not just about winning an argument, right? It's all about winning souls. Um, the Christian engages so that the non-believer will hear the truth of Christ. We Again, we want them to hear the word. Um, we know that not everyone will hear the word and what in a church setting, right? I, or they're not going to follow you to a woman that I lose or a convention, but you do have opportunities to what, to minister the word of God again and be effective. So um, according to RC Spro, I like this. We have two tasks or tactics that we can use, or one of our tasks is proof, right? And persuasion. So in one area of the book, I'm just going to read this part. He says, um, I'm just going to read in this section, the skeptic at this point might respond, prove it, which is a good thing because proof is actually another facet of the apologetic task. He goes on to say, sadly in our day, many Christians argue that we ought not to be engaged in attempts to prove the truth claims of Christianity, that faith and proof are incompatible. So I'm sure we'll, that's, um, you know what? I want some feedback from y'all. How do you, what do you guys think about that? Do you think faith and proof are incompatible? Anybody? I can see how you can think they're incompatible mm -hmm. because faith is, you believe in it kind of before it happens or the expectancy that it can happen. But the proof is that my God never lies. So Amen. it's it's gonna come regardless. So I can I can kind of see I can see both sides because you wouldn't I I can see both sides. I wouldn't think of any them um in comparison. Yep, I agree. Anybody else? Is it clear? Do y'all think it's clear? It should be two separate schools. Like why in the world would they think that? Or you kind of agree with Kenya? Or just like um us too early in the course? I don't know what? yet. Um, Dr. Didi, I yes, think that once you, once you, um, like the scripture says, you know, Christ being the center of your life, um, mm -hmm. as you grow in him, there'll be enough proof in your faith. Um, mm -hmm. so when you are speaking, um, you know, you, you'll be able to point to things. You may be able, be able to point to experiences that can provide some proof, but at the same time, you know, faith and proof, um, they, they may work hand in hand, you know, because for the atheist or for the non-believer, mm -hmm. They're going to want proof, but our words have to be so persuasive with facts, scripture wise, and, and, and actually experiences that that will be the proof. Yes. Good points. Great points. Anybody else? Evangelist Ware, since you've been reading, what's your thought? What is, what's your take? I'm not putting you on the hot seat. I just want, want your take. <laughs> I, I agree with, uh, with Miss, with Miss Dana, what she said. I, yeah. I I agree. Okay. <laughs> One more. Anybody else? Pastor Ricky, you always have some insight. You got anything tonight? He's like, no, he might be working. Okay. So we're going to move on a little bit. And again, I will make sure that I, I send you guys that um, some no, about five just... six pages. Go ahead, Pastor Ricky. How are you tonight? I'm good. No, I'm just, I'm taking it all in. I'm saying wow on the other side. 
you know, it's it's really it's something to to think about. And I'm kind of getting the sidetrack, but I, I always think about this. You know, um, with that being said, I believe Nero also was responsible for the crucifixion of Peter, as we know what he was crucified upside down, the beheading of Paul. Um, Paul was a Roman citizen, so as a bonus, he could be beheaded as opposed to crucified. But I think about that. I was like, you know, I don't know um, anybody that would want to be crucified upside down. They had to have seen what they said. They had to have seen the miracles. They had to have walked with Jesus. They had to have seen him ascend, the death, burial, resurrection. So to me, that would be a bigger witness than anything. And I just wonder, but I guess their hearts, as the word said, was hardened. So it was hard for them to receive. Now, we know a lot of other things were going on in Rome and Greece, you know, um, the climate, socioeconomic things, their beliefs, the many gods. But I just have to think. And they never swayed from that truth, even for us today, right? No matter what, they stayed on, they stayed firm in their convictions. They stood on the word of God. So you would have to believe that, hey, you know, I know we have our faith today, right? But there, and um, there would have to be something from this eyewitnesses to say, hey, they really, this, these events really did happen. And one of the other things, you know, that we, um, you know, as Christians, we do have historical facts, you know, backing us up. Um, like they said, like when we studied uh, Muhammad and the Quran, well, the Quran could not really be backed up, right? But the, the accounts in the word of God, the Bible can be backed up. And we know over time what the ark has been found. There's been, um, I don't want to say relics, but I will for this one, you know, found that, that confirm what happened in the word of God. So, you know, we can take confidence in that. We can stand on the fact that yes, these things happen historically. Jesus walked the earth. There is records of these things. So we have, and I say that because we have the necessary tools to be able to effectively uh, uh, defend our faith. And at the end of this chapter one, we're going to into what he's calling, um, I'm going to say two of the most powerful tools that we have, the existence of God, right? And the word of God, the Bible. And if there is, you know what, I'm going to tell y'all this story. I'm, I'm again getting it off, but this happened is really fresh. I work in a healthcare setting and I don't understand how people can deny the existence of God, but what happened, and I'll try to do it quickly is that we had a um, a patient. She's not young. She's probably in her mid-30s um, that, uh, well, you know, passed away, expired, went home to be with the Lord yesterday. And her mother called in today and she was giving her, uh, I'm going to call it a testimony. She was telling what happened to her. But one of the things, um, just to give a little background, you know, there's some developmental delay. Patient was on a vent. She functioned, but, you know, she, you know, there was some delay. Um, she was an adult with a pediatric mind, right? But one of the things that her mom, you know, and because she's cared for this child, you know, all her life, however, however, I can't even remember, 30, 40 years. But the deal, what she would say was, when you, when you um, give me a thumbs up, let me know that you're okay. When, thank you, Lord. When you see Jesus, give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you're okay. So she says, when she got home, um, the patient had already passed. She had been gone over 20 minutes. Um, she was turning blue. And she said out of nowhere, no knee jerk reaction, the patient did what? Gave her a thumbs up to let her know that she had seen Jesus, that she was with Jesus. Again, this patient was blue. She was gone. She had no pulse, nothing for 20 minutes. So again, it makes you wonder with all the testaments that we have, there is a God. How in the world do people uh, confess that there is no God, right? But thank you, Lord. That's my kick. There is a God. We believe that Jesus is Lord. And I just I just had to share that because we that was such a powerful testament to the power of God. And not only that, to the love of God, to be able to give this mother um, some sense of comfort that even in the face of this deep grief, I'm sure for the loss of a child, 
she knows that this baby went home to be with the Lord because you cannot tell me. I, I don't know if any of you guys have ever been with someone that has just passed, whether it be five minutes or three minutes. There is no activity. There is absolutely nothing going on. Glory to God. But again, we have what? Jesus. We have the word of God and we have God on our side. We can prove these facts. We don't have to be intimidated. Peter is right. We don't stand in fear. We don't stand in, in intimidation. We have the power of God on our side and we can go in any arena, right? And declare the works of the Lord, declare the goodness of the Lord. Let people know who our God is. There is no what, no fear in us. I will not be intimidated by an atheist, right? You cannot convince me that there is no God when I have seen God move every day. New mercies, right? And that's what the words say. We get new mercies every day. When we get to see the hand of God on our lives, on the lives of our loved ones, right? On, on our jobs, glory to God. So we can rest assured in what we have, what we know. That's all apologetics is to me, right? I'm going to defend, I'm going to stand on what I know. Right. And if I don't believe it, I'm not going to stand on it. I'm not going to defend anything I don't believe. I'm going to defend my faith and I'm going to do it with in victory. Right. We're not going to back down. We're not going to shy away. Amen. We're going to move forward. Not sure how I got twisted up. Jesus. God is good, y'all. God is a big God. Glory to God. We're going to stand on this word. You know, I don't know if y'all, I know some Christians that feel like they don't have what it takes. Well, if you're spending time with God, right? If you're doing what you're supposed to do, which is reading his word, which is praying, what is prayer? It's just communicating with God. It ain't nothing spooky. It's spending time with him, getting in his presence, reading my word, confessing the word. Let that word read me. Glory to God. Then I go out and I present who I am. I present all that he is to other people. Wow, it should be easy. It's not a hard thing. It's not a difficult thing. We Sometimes we make things difficult. Sometimes we let people convince us, talk us out of our faith. How can that be? Hmm. That ain't apologetics. Don't let anybody, I know this is not y'all. We're not going to let anybody talk us out of who we are. We're not going to let anybody talk us, us out of what we believe, right? Glory to God. We have... We have this, as my daddy can say, this is a sure thing. <laughs> he is in an industry that he has to make, you know, he's he has competitors. And his thing is, this is what I have, man. This is a sure thing. What we have is a sure thing. Glory to God. I appreciate God for giving that lady peace. I've been working with them for years, so I understand what they've been going through. And I, I just thank God for that. But I'm going to get back to apologetics like I'm supposed to be before y'all call Chancellor on me. <laughs> oh, man, then I have to defend myself. <laughs> I'll be like, wait a minute, uh, Chancellor. Check the tape. Can y'all might tell on me Sunday? So I'm going to get back to it. <laughs> but again, I'm going to agree with R.C. Sproul. We have, uh, we can stand on the uh, existence of God. Jesus reincarnated, right? Um, we can stand on the word of God. We can stand on the Bible, the inspired word, the real truth, no matter what uh, the Quran says. Uh-oh, what happened? What happened? I'm sorry, what's happening, Dr. D? Yeah, what happened? You just blanked out. Uh, we <laughs> see, we, we're here, we see you. Oh, y'all can see me? Yeah. Yes. Oh, Satan, you're a lie. You don't have no victory up in this piece. <laughs> My screen just blanked out. Okay, maybe swipe left. I don't know. Yeah, maybe <laughs> I, it's probably something I did. I probably got a little um carried away or something, got excited about something. But next we're going to go. I'm believe it or not, I'm gonna let y'all go a little bit early. Um, but we we're going to go into lesson two. So if you have your books, I want you to want you to read or go back or does anybody have any questions for me is there anything we want to review again dr dd can i expound on what you just said about the last thing about uh <clears throat> us always looking for validation from people for who yes. god for, for who we are 
Um, just just to piggyback on what you said, the the biggest problem in the body of Christ uh, that I see sometimes is we as Christians, we as believers that have been called, we get so caught up in looking for a validation from people. People didn't call us. That's right. People didn't anoint us. God That's did. Right. And when we learn that we don't need nobody's validation for what God has called to the forefront, we will operate better as believers, Christians in church. Uh, God is our solid rock. He is our yes. foundation. He is That's all right. that we need. And I, I was sharing with somebody today at work. Uh, she was like, well, I just, you know, uh, I'd be looking for this and I'd be looking for that. And I said, but why? Why, why are you looking for this stuff from people? Mm -hmm. Because people didn't call you. God That's did. Right. And then until you can start operating in your gifts and your talents of what God sees in you and what God has called you to the forefront of, you're going to keep being disappointed by people because people are always going to fail you. God is not going to fail you. God is going right. to always right. still be there. So I think when, when we as a body stop looking for confirmation and validation from other people, we would be a whole lot better off and we can move and operate in the things uh, that God has for us a whole lot better. Amen. 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 I agree. Well said. Anybody else want to interject? I mean, Please. could those Pastor Doris, Ricky do? Because I see him come on. Could there be a confusion with people with validation and confirmation of where they're getting it from? I think there's a confusion mm -hmm. there. Confirmation versus validation. Mm -hmm. So, almost like the rumors, right? Yep. Are they drinking blood? Yep. Are they eating mm -hmm. somebody's flesh? Mm -hmm. No, they're participating in communion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's a um, very good point. Um, to Sister Nina's point, I sometimes I and this is my me thinking out loud about this. I think sometimes it depends on the nate, the state of the soul, the state on the the person, the individual, because some people need confirmation and some people need validation. I think it really depends on where that person is in their life. You know, you may go, you may can go for it now. Nobody have to tell you anything. You just walk in the God that you that you know. You know, when you know your calling and you know what he's called you to do. But a lot of people are still trying to figure out what God has called them to do. And because they really don't know, they are struggling with confirmation. Progress. And, you know, and so um, I believe it really depends on that individual because some of us is confident. Some of you know, you guys are confident in God. Mm -hmm. You're confident in your call. Um, it's good to have confirmation. But if I not me not having confirmation will not stop me from moving forward because I, because at some point I've got to be obedient to the will and the mind of God about my life, you know? So I think sometimes people do, they need it. And it just depends on how wounded they've been. Um, and that, that, that wound comes from many different places. It could have come from leaders, could have come from uh, um, family members growing up, could, several places, but um, there, there, there's been times I needed both of them, you know, but then there's been some times also that I've been confident in the God and what he's called me to do, you know, and, um, you know, so that's just my thoughts on that. So um, for me, uh, um, Evangelist Patricia, like um, some people are still babies in Christ mm -hmm. and they're not where you're at yet. That um, like um, Sister um, uh, Dana said that um, they, 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 some people still need that confirmation because they're not where you're at. So, and just to piggyback okay. on that, I'm mm -hmm. not, let, let me just clarify, I'm not talking about uh, babes in Christ or people that's just converting or just coming to Christ. I'm talking about seasoned, uh, seasoned saints. Mm -hmm. I put it that way. I'm talking mm -hmm. about seasoned saints. I'm uh, not somebody new that's just coming in because I know it's going to take time with them. They, they just like a newborn baby. You got to nourish them. You got to feed them. You got to get them along the way. When, when I just, the statement that I just made, I was, and I should have clarified, I'm talking about the older seasoned people such as myself or maybe you or maybe uh or sister dana we, mm -hmm. we we know the call and like she said no sometimes it, it during the walk we had to be uh validated we had to have mm -hmm. that confirmation but now that we have grown spiritually and maturely uh i still find some people 
uh, still looking mm -hmm. for that and they still hadn't grabbed hold to what God has called them for and, and they know what they're supposed to be doing. They just not doing it. That's that's what I meant by that. And I absolutely agree with you there. <laughs> you know what? And y'all have absolutely given me a great idea. So I was going to ask it tonight, but I, I think I like to see your, your thoughts on paper better. So this is your 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 assignment. Oh, Lord, uh, Dr. Dee, we done got ourselves in trouble with this discussion. <laughs> Lord. Thank you, sister. Y'all are Nina amazing. Y'all are amazing. So, I, but I like I like the thought process. So in 250 words, explain to me how you would teach, you no, know, how you would teach a babe in Christ. How would you guide them with apologetics? How would you instruct them? What would you tell them? to make them feel comfortable, to build, as, as Sister Dana said, build up my confidence. I'm a, I'm a new babe in Christ. I'm excited. The zeal is there. I'm excited. But somebody asked me a question. Um, I think I know the answer. I don't quite know the answer. I don't quite understand. While you're, while we're writing that assignment, I do have a question. Sure. Um, so I think um, Evangelist Ware was, you know, saying about, you know, not, she wasn't referring to like babes, like fresh, mm -hmm. I say fresh Christians, but you are more so talking about people that's, I guess, been walking this walk for a while. So my question is what, when, um, at what point do you, I guess, stop looking or should you stop looking for that confirmation or that validation? Because um, brief, just a brief thing, like with me, like I'm comfortable with doing ministering the word or telling people about Christ through dancing way more than I am like being on class. Like I get nervous on class because, you know, y'all are pastors, preachers, evangelists, and, you know, and, and I don't want to um, walk this walk prematurely. So I want to soak up everything, but I don't want it to be where I'm trying to get y'all's approval as more so as getting God's approval, but where, where do you, where's that line or where is that border to where it shouldn't even, it shouldn't matter because I'm not a babe in Christ. I'm not new to this, but I'm not as, I don't want to say season, but I'm not as, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just not there where most of you are. So my confidence in doing this type of stuff is not where it should be, but I know God, I know him and I know he's not, you know, you know, whatever, but I just, I, I guess I'm kind of confused on it. Should there be confirmation or validation? Should there not before, be confirmation? Before anybody answers, I'm going to answer. As, so one thing I believe we are all in school together. We are all here because we all want to grow and learn. And you may hear me refer to Pastor Ricky or Prophetess Dana, you know, however, if I don't call everybody by their title, because I, I, I try to balance it because I don't want you anybody to feel like because they're not titled per se that they don't have enough to give to the class because you you do have something to give. And that brings me to um, another question. Um, is there even though we we say that, is there ever a point where you you know, where you feel like you are 100 percent in every area of your life? Because as Dr. Spears says, we're always learning, we're always growing so, you know, maybe you feel proficient, like you said, in dance, you're not, you don't feel as proficient in another area. Well, it just gives you an opportunity to grow in that, in those other areas. It doesn't, you know, you'll hear a chance to say there's no big eye, you know, and no little you, but somebody else can take that. Anybody else want to address Kiel? So don't, don't feel like you don't have enough to give because you do. You know, the whole same Holy Spirit that's in me is in you. He's guiding and, and granting all of us what wisdom. His his um attributes, his characteristics are the same. Point the way to Jesus, bring things back to our memory. Um, I can't even think of them all now, but we all that whole same Holy Spirit resides on the inside of us. But don't, you know, again, I'll say, so maybe I feel proficient in this area, but hey, I'm just starting to grow in this other area. Um, let's say, let's say, for instance, I don't know, hey, I have the word of knowledge, but I'm just starting to uh, interpret, interpret tongues. Mm -hmm. 
So mm -hmm. I'm growing in that area. So I say that I don't know that there's ever an area. Of course, you're going to feel strong in some things, some, some areas over others, right? You mm -hmm. know, there's some areas. I got four minutes on my job, right? So forgive me, this is not a slam. I work with some millennials. They are very good at some techie things that I'm not. My memory is pretty good. And I have one, Deron, he's like, that's how your mind work, Didi. I'm like, don't your mind work the same? But it's some things that I go to them for because they're good at it. It's not that I can't do it, but they do it and they do it so much faster and they do it with ease, right? And there's some things that they go to me that I do it quicker and I do it with ease. So I think it's that way in the body of Christ. And all I'm saying is don't beat yourself up and don't think you're smaller than anybody, you know, that. Bishop Jakes is here, Pastor Doll is here, and your little here is little Kenyel. Because one thing I read this book, and then I'll stop. Jesse Duplantis wrote a book about his adventures, not adventures, his trip to heaven. And one thing out of everything that he said that impressed me is that he said one thing about uh, the kingdom of heaven. We know it's a working society, but everybody was trying to push each other up. Nobody was trying to belittle the other person. If you needed to understand how to worship the king, they all came together and showed you how to worship, right? There was no you know, what we call in, in the world put downs. We all get there together. We all get there together, right? Mm -hmm. Pastor yeah. D, may I say, um, Pastor D, I'm sorry, Dr. D, D, may I say something if you don't sure. mind? Sure. You know, one scripture in the Bible says, each part supply at the whole. And yes. everybody on this platform tonight has a obligation to, to each person. You know, we, we've met we've met on this platform, but I'm obligated yeah. to Sister Nina and I'm obligated to Evangelist Patricia. Um, because I've come into, you know, covenant with you just by way of being in this class, Amen. you know, so each part supply, uh, supply the whole, um, sister Kenyell, you're going to bring something to the table that I may not bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Pastor just explained that Dr. Didi just explained that, but at the same time, you know, here again, um, the Bible also says that he that compares himself to another is not wise. You know, we're all in our own, um, um, space tonight, mm -hmm. trying to grow and trying to get more so that we can, advance the kingdom of God, you know? So I would say that, you know, in one pastor, I heard preaching, I'm done, I'm Dr. DD, but he says, um, I didn't come to compete. I come to complete. Yes. And if that's our mindset, you know, I didn't come to compete. I come to complete because what I'm learning now, what we're going to um, glean from each other is going to be some, something that I can take Amen. away from this laptop tonight and take out in the field tomorrow, Amen. you know? And so, um, the Bible says this fire is not the day of small beginning. So, you know, you might see yourself here, okay? But that's not where you are in the eyes of God. They, you know, that's your, you're, you, we're all maturing and growing into yes. and becoming, okay? Um, until we come into the full measure of the man that he's called, the Christ, the image of Christ. So um, we, we come to com complete each other, you know, and that's what we're here for. Um, I'm, I'm not Amen. about titles myself. I don't care if nobody, I always sit in the back, whatever it may be. I don't, I don't, I can't, I'm telling you, it's about my walk with God. It's about me learning and, and being engrafted more into the vine. That's what it's about. It's not about trying to be more knowledgeable, anything. I need him. I need him. I need him. Amen. My job dictates that I need him, you know, so I need him. I got to have him. I do too much work with these children, honey. I need Jesus. <laughs> just so you know, you know, so just remember that sweetheart. Um, each part supply at the whole, you very eloquent when you speak, yes. very knowledgeable. You got a great spirit about you. You add value just so you know, Amen. okay. You added value. To God be the glory. Um, pastor, uh, Staley going to send me some more hate mail. Prophetess. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 he going to talk about me. He going to send me that message. Let my people go. Who's on uh, evangelist. Where pray us out, and y'all, I'm glad to see you guys have a great rest of the week. That assignment is due Monday, it's easy peasy. All right, let us pray, Lord Heavenly Father. I just say thank you for this evening, God. Thank you for this time in class, God. Thank you for the knowledge that we receive, God. Let us not be only hearers of your word, God, but let us also be doers of your word, God. God, keep our minds afresh. Uh, God, while we're in class, God, let us pull and learn from each other. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, God, I just say thank you for what has been poured tonight, God. God, continue to pour in our cups until we're filled up and we overflow, that we can overflow on someone else, that they may learn uh, from us that we, what we have learned from each other and we are learning from you, God. So tonight, God, I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for this time. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Hey, you guys have a great rest of the week. Be blessed.